Hey, welcome everybody, it's Caleb. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about a really simple and clean setup for Visual Studio Code to have a nice output. Now, my inspiration to do this was basically when I was creating these videos, I wanted to have as little clutter on the screen as possible. This was made very simple with Sublime. It was my editor of choice for a lot of videos, but my personal preference in editor was Visual Studio Code. So I was thinking, hmm, maybe I can get that same experience in Visual Studio Code with a few key extensions. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. I'm gonna show you what extensions, what themes, and what settings I enabled or disabled. So we have the default Visual Studio Code set up right here. And even right now, I can't even run this Python file. So let's just go through the extensions. The very first one is Python, which I'm coding in Python, it might be a little bit different for you. Most likely if you save a file with whatever extension, it'll give you a suggestion to install the correct extension. I haven't changed any settings with that. Basically, I just wanted to be able to run Python. And when I do this, it does work. I get the output testing. However, it's fairly cluttered and it's fairly difficult to see that actual output. Not really ideal for video content or for really focusing on the output there. So the extension you're going to want to get is called Code Runner. So you can search this. It's called Code Runner, Run C, C++, Java, and so forth. We'll hit Install. And now what we can do is from our Python file, we can run this and we have two options, run code or run Python file in terminal. All right, now when I run code, it'll show up in the output, which you can tell is a lot cleaner. Now I configured some settings to get it to look this way as well as a shortcut. So what we can do is we can go back to our extensions and you can copy my configuration for this. So extension settings, and I'll try to give a little bit more space here. The main ones of interest is I check this first thing, which will clear the previous output. If this is not enabled, basically what will happen is it will list numerous outputs and you'll have to scroll through them. If you choose to go this route, you can click this lock and unlock it and that'll enable auto scroll. So now when I run this, it'll automatically scroll to the most recent output. But my personal taste, I just prefer to clear out that output and it makes it a lot better as well as getting that visual refresh so you can see that it's a new execution. So that was the first setting. And you can scroll through here, see what else? Nothing too crazy, there's a couple of other ones, but I'm just scrolling through so you can copy exactly what I have. This one, run in terminal, you can choose to select that. Basically what that'll do is it'll cause it to run in the terminal instead of the output, which is important if you're taking user input However, if you're just doing output focused stuff, then you can just use the output one. And additionally, even if this is unchecked, you still have the option to select this run Python file in terminal, and that'll work just the same. Next up in the settings, I have it to save all the files. Show execution messages. I have this unchecked. So when this is checked, what'll happen is it'll give a little bit of extra information when we run this, which can be nice if you're doing some testing or you want to see extra details. But again, it's a setting I chose to disable. We'll scroll through here more and everything else looks good. So that is how you can get it to look exactly like this. The next thing I wanna do though is actually assign a shortcut key. Now I believe by default you can just do control option N but it's a little obnoxious because you can't really do it easily with one hand. So I decided I just want to do a custom shortcut and you can set it to whatever you like. So let's learn how to do custom shortcuts in Visual Studio Code. We can go to view command palette and type in shortcut and then under preferences, open keyboard shortcuts. And here you can search code runner and the one we're looking for is run code. So you can see I set it to alt and the left arrow key. So basically that's the option button on Mac. So I can just do that really easily with my right hand, two fingers. So you can edit that here and just type in whatever command you want. Now, most likely you're gonna think of some good commands and they're already gonna be taken by some other extensions or capabilities. So be a little bit creative. So having that shortcut key will allow me to easily run my file and get that output down here. Next up, briefly want to talk a little bit about the theme. Now I'm not super picky when it comes to themes. I just want something that looks good and I don't tend to like the default theme for Visual Studio Code. I like to switch it up just a little bit. So the theme I like is the GitHub theme. So I'll show you how to get that. You can go to extensions, just search GitHub. Second one on here, GitHub theme, we can hit install and it defaults to light default, which I don't really like. So you could try dark default, which looks like this, pretty nice. And this is what the code looks like. And you can change it by set color theme it is the GitHub dark or even the GitHub dark dimmed where the primary difference is the dimmed one, the terminal is 
a little bit gray. And then if you go for the dark, the terminal is white and it's a little bit brighter. So that is the theme I am going with. So those are just a few simple steps you can do just to affect the visual output of Visual Studio Code. And this doesn't really go into any details on how to effectively work in Python or anything like that. I might do a dedicated video on that content later, but for now, I'm pretty satisfied with the way this looks. That's all the bare minimum. I'm sure there are a lot of other things I could do. So if you have any suggestions, drop a comment in the comment section below. There's a couple other notes I wanted to mention as an extra section in this video for those of you who are interested. The first tip is that this output doesn't take input. So what that means is if you grab input, this isn't gonna work out too well. So when I run this, it doesn't give me the option to type anything. If that's the case, you'll want to run this in the terminal. And when that's the case, you can then type. So that's probably gonna bite you in the butt if you're not paying attention and you're trying to input some data. The next thing is that whenever you change settings, you might want to save this configuration. And there's an experimental feature with Visual Studio Code. So if you go to the extensions and open up any of the extension settings, that's actually not an extension, that's a theme. So let's go back and we can open up extension settings. There's a button here to turn on setting sync and it gives you the option to read the documentation. It's actually pretty involved. So there's a lot of different details on how to get the syncing working and how to deal with merge conflicts or anything like that. But basically this will allow you to sync using your GitHub account or Microsoft account so you can go ahead and choose what you want to sync, including keyboard shortcuts, which is very nice, and the extensions. So sign in and turn on, sign in with GitHub, and then you'll authorize access. Once that's done, you should be good to go. And now my settings are synced. 